especially those of, of my own. Right? <coughs> okay, so it's like 50%. That's good. What about Git? So got some Git pens. Oh, it grows every year, so that's good. And uh, Hudson users or Jenkins, whatever it is. Jenkins. <laughs> Yeah, it's always bad. I don't, I don't know what they call it anymore. It's called by Hudson by default because you know it feels like you have to call you know you have to for political affiliation. You have to choose the name. Hudson went by default for me. Okay, so uh, basically uh, the way this talk is going to be structured is uh, I'm going to talk a little bit some of the new uh, integrations coming in my uh, around you know, Git, Garrett, Hudson, and, and that's some good stuff. And then um, and then we'll do some demos because now it's always fun. So. Studying and uh, talking about here. So, uh, a little bit of background about me. Uh, my name is Chris Isaac. Uh, I currently uh, work at Red Hat. I have a small team of engineers that hack on Eclipse and other good open source uh, technology. My particular background is uh, I've been with Eclipse for a long time. It's almost been um, a decade now. I think actually Eclipse uh, celebrates its 10 year anniversary later this year, too, so that's going to be fun. Um, big, ba uh, big background in OSGI. I've been doing that for long time, and just the past uh, few years I've been focusing on uh, Git because um, at Eclipse.org we're moving to Git, and that's a fun, it's been a fun experience, and I'll talk a little bit about uh, that later, so I'll show you some of the experiences we've had. Uh, I sit on the board of directors, you know, I like to run, I co-authored the uh, RCP book out there, and I'm recently starting a new book on uh, Git and Garrett, uh, which, uh, which should be fun, so I forgot how painful it was to write the other book. So. Good times. Okay, so um, first I'll do a little uh, introduction about the Mylon project since half of you already are users. Um, this should be a little bit of a, an overview for you. And then I'll sort of get into the demos with uh, Hudson slash Jenkins uh, with Mylon. I'll talk a little bit about distributed version control. And then I'll talk a little bit with code about code review, Kate and Garrett, and demo some of the cool new Mylon tools uh, around those technologies. And then I'll wrap things up. So I tend to be pretty informal, so if you guys like, have a question, about something you're talking about, feel free to raise your hand and uh, you know I'll stop talking and let you answer the question during the presentation. Okay. So um, you know let's talk a little bit about Mylan. So uh, you know Mylan is pretty much the uh, task and application uh, lifecycle framework within Eclipse. So um, you know it has a couple main things. One, it has the wonderful task focus interface uh, that people like to use in code. So basically, when you open a file, you're able to sort of Mylan remembers what things you're looking at and you can associate that with tasks. Fantastic technology. The one of the main benefits of Mylan is that it allows you to integrate with all these existing tools like Bugzilla, uh, uh, you know, Hudson and Jenkins, which some of the stuff I'll demo over today, Garrett, and some of the other tools. So it acts sort of as an integration hub of a variety of technologies. So essentially, um, what happens is you, you reduce your context switching. So you know, in the past, as a developer, you know, you know, I have a Hudson instance running, I have Garrett. Uh, you know, I guess in, or Bugzilla, and I'm always, you know, all tapping between my actual development environment and, you know, a browser and uh, reading data from Hudson and build reports. So, what Mylan does essentially reduces all this context context switching and brings it all integrated uh, into Eclipse. So, you end up saving quite a bit of time, which adds up, uh, you know, over the years when you don't have to keep paging to to the browser to get your information. So. I'll do a little history, a uh, quick little overview of the history of Mylan. So basically it started out as a research project back in 2004 from uh, UBC uh, in Canada. Um, you know, it started to grow. They had an initial release, got some early adopters. You know, the API solidified. They released 3.3 uh, in uh, 2009. Uh, 2010, uh, there was a new Mylan topical project started, which basically Mylan grew to a point where they wanted to create a new high-level project that Eclipse and also specific components. Generally, uh, within the Eclipse that if you're a top-level project, that's generally a, a, a huge sign of uh, maturity. So they basically mature to a point where they deserve their own, uh, own top-level project. And in 2011, uh, just recently, I think last month, uh, Mylan 3.5 uh, came out. And the majority of the demos today were all Mylan 3.5. So in 3.4, Mylan was pretty much broken up into four main uh, components. So you had the task component of Mylan, which had integrations with Bugzilla, Track, and, and other um, you know, task-based systems. You had the context stuff, which integrated with the Java JDT and the CDT, the version stuff, which was CBS, and they had a small little side project called the uh, Bolded Docs component, which is the wiki text stuff. So useful if you're editing uh, wikis within Eclipse or generating documentation from wikis. Uh, with Mylan 3.5, the, the big restructuring came, and um, you still have you know, task context versions and docs, but you have uh, two new uh, components within the Mylan project now for, for usage. 
One is called Builds. So Builds is sort of an abstract API that allows you to plug in continuous integration systems uh, in, in Eclipse. So um, the, the sort of the de facto limitation that's going to be hosted at Eclipse.org is Hudson, because um, at Eclipse we use Hudson to do all our builds. So you know that's exactly that's the one we'll use first um, for reviews. Um, there'll be a, a Garrett implementation. So basically, reviews is kind of a abstract API to allow you to plug in code review system. So I'm not sure what most people you know use out there today. I know there's a couple products out there like SmartBear has something. Garrett, if you're using Git, there's review boards. So there's a couple stuff out there, but we're uh, simply focusing on Garrett first within Miley because that's what a lot of Eclipse or projects are, are going to use. So uh, let's do a little bit of background on uh, Jenkins and, and my reviews. So, you know, I'm sure the majority of you probably use Hudson, right, or some form of, you know, continuous integration system within your, within your team. So, you know, a quick explanation is that, you know, Hudson's an extensible continuous integration server, has a pretty easy to use and set up, integrates well with Maven, tons of plugins out there to generate reports and all, and all that good stuff. So it's generally pretty popular uh, within um, the Java community. And you know, the, some of you may know is recently uh, forked uh, by the community to this uh, you know, Oracle debacle, and there's also, it's called Jenkins now. So just for easy use, I'm just going to call it Hudson, and we'll, we'll keep it that way for now. Um, so like I mentioned before, the Mountain Builds project basically is scoped to allow you to integrate all these uh, CI systems um, that are out there. There's the website uh, you can um, jump to. The technology currently within the Builds project is in an incubating state. So it's um, you know still not 1.0 already, but definitely a new stuff for you to use with your team. So um, I'm going to talk a little bit about uh, you know distributed version control. So uh, from people's hands, it seems a lot of people you know heard about Git or are actually using Git now. So that's good. You know it's better than better than last year. So um, you know everyone knows version control is, is you have to have it right. You know it manages change. If you have any decent sized software project, you, know, you, you have to have that version control. Um, you know. They allow teams to collaborate, you can manage all the changes, you can allow for continuous integration, all these good things that traditional version control systems um, allow for. Um, but um, recent popularity uh, has happened that a lot of these distributed version control systems now, like Git, Imperial, um, Bazaar, are, are pretty much used by almost every open source project I can think of. And you know, slowly more corporate related projects are starting to adopt it, but um, it, it's taken some time. But, there's just too many advantages um, with, with uh, distributed version control. So like, like I mentioned before, it's hard for me to actually name one open source project that does not use, like one major open source project that not, does not use one form of, of uh, distributed version control. I think Apache is the only one that is just using subversion, but I just can't think of one. So. But um, you know, there's, there's, there's good reasons why, you know, why this is the case, mostly because um, you know, in the open source case, you could collaborate without any central authority. You know, there's 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 no you know really main server that you have to deal with. It's easier to you know share your changes with, with your colleagues. Um, for me, who travels quite a bit, um, I have the advantage of disconnected operations. So I could uh, you know when I'm on the airplane without Wi-Fi, I could do all my work, commit my changes, and get a lot of stuff done. And then once I'm online, I could share those changes in in any way um, I choose to. One of the Biggest advantages that uh, I think most open source projects really move to DPCS uh, is the easy branch conversion. So you can pretty much, you know, cherry pick changes, grab changes between branches like nobody's business. Like it, and until you've experienced it, it's hard to actually uh, say how, how how easy this is. The other important thing is that um, you know systems like Git Hurl, it's very easy to find your own workflow workflow too. So depending on how your project is structured, if you have a small one, it's or a large one that's really easy to set up your, your own workflow. And uh, there's a ton of there's a ton of powerful community sharing tools, which I'll talk about in a bit. So, you know, I mentioned you know, it's really easy to collaborate if you don't really have to deal with a, a central server. So if the central server goes down, you're not screwed. So that's uh, definitely a plus. Um, you know, disconnected operations are, are quite uh, quite a productive productivity boost for me, so I don't have to deal with uh, servers going down. It's, it's quite awesome I did. It, it was odd how often, like you know, the you know, version control server would go down and you have to deal with it, but not anymore. Um, branches are everywhere now, so in a distributed sense, you're always creating branches generally to rep represent features or quick fixes, and uh, it's basically extremely easy to isolate changes within a distributed version control system. Um, 
the coolest thing um, is you kind of really get to find you know one of your own workflows. So you know, if you have a small project, you can kind of do the uh, sort of old school centralized approach where you have like one master repository and a bunch of developers working against that one. Or, you know, you go with the Linux model, which if you see on the right, that's kind of you know they have their blessed repository. They have Linux as a dictator, and he pulls changes from his lieutenants who pull changes from a bunch of developers from the community. So um, you know these distributed systems make it really easy to set up. Uh, you know, a variety of, of workflows, which is important if you have a small project or, or a large project or a very large open source organization like, like Eclipse. Um, the other cool thing is, um, you know, in terms of building community, there's so many cool little sites out there. You know, I mean, this, the trend is called like social coding, whatever you want to call it, but sites like GitHub, BitBucket, Pictorious, um, allow, allow people to really easily discover your stuff and also fork it and contribute changes back which was a lot more difficult in sort of the traditional, you know, CDS subversion style uh, sites out there. But I think this um, this quote by Shulworth is, is, is pretty relevant. So distributor control is all about empowering community, 